I don't see it. I, 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 I simply cannot see it, and I uh, will see how they change things up here in, in map number two, which it's loser's pick for server or map. I assume that means it's going to be server pick for them here. And Sophia has first pick. So yeah, it is likely server pick for unfair. So it's going to be on NA. Yeah. Shattered Desert, though, and first pick, the choice for Sophia. How how do you, how different? I mean, obviously, okay, it's a very different map from Serpent Beach, duh. But what, what made you think Sophia wants to go here specifically? Probably would have been a pocket choice that they would have been developing, right? As we say with people mm -hmm. uh, when they want to build teams, usually we say to them, you want to have four maps that you kind of have in your back pocket. Of course, we know in the later brackets, it's going to be a best of seven. So you want to have four set ways so you know you can win the game. And other than that, it's going to be how you respond to your opponents. So that's why, I think. Okay, yeah. I mean, pocket pick they can pull out here. And obviously, they are comfortable with Crunchy on ROM. Pick ROM first still. It's still going to be good. But unfair, Grover also great here as well. And this is, I think, one of Azan's better maps, at least when I was playing him. This always felt like a map where I could, I could pick him over any other tank his mobility is is great his poke is fantastic on a map that is as wide as this one is but sophia are hard committing to this <laughs> to this aggressive play style with furia now taken instead of corvus that alt can can really open the doors on a map where you really can't you can kite only so far but you're getting poked the whole time yep i've always said in a slow meta as well what's going to make the difference is the team that's able to make aggressive stuff work mm -hmm. sophia definitely very very comfortable with it and with the first Rome pick as well it says a lot I had a conversation with Eagle not too long ago about Rom, and I thought he's pretty much the ultimate champion. He's able to provide a mm -hmm. lot of things in a draft, no matter what, whether it's healing, damage, distraction. Yeah, he's a pretty good champion that I'm surprised not to see banned. Triple tank. Okay, this is not the first time we've seen it, but is, is this the first time we've seen Leon? No. Is this... So, yeah. So, okay, Crimes okay. Against Humanity, the Russian team, actually That's played right. Leon yesterday. Yes. Oh no, I think it was the other way around. Not sure. The names switched the land a lot, but yeah, we game? did have the draft yeah. names wrong like 50% of the time yeah. early yesterday. So I totally uh, understand. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> Ooh, but triple DPS versus Cashman. triple tank. That I feel like the Tyra is the real game changer in that triple DPS comp, right? Like yeah. just three DPS, maybe you can't burn through three tanks, but if you mark one and focus him down, that could be that could be the difference maker. Tyra is a very much I wouldn't like to say a complete staple, but she's very, very good in triple DPS comps because mm -hmm. she gives you the utility you need. If you don't have enough damage, Tyra gives you the damage. If you need to stop the point, she's got fire. If you need to mark someone and know where someone is at all time, get down a big tank where people are playing multiple, which is what Sophia mm -hmm. doing. You've got the utility there. So Tyra, very good pick for unfair. Me and you also, we, we talked about Azan, uh, we talked about Ash solo tank yesterday, I believe. Yes. But how do you feel about the Azan solo tank, do you think? I, I I think it's better just because he can actually withstand pressure and, and kind of counter you with, with the stun rather than Ash. Once she does that, she's kind of screwed. Do you think it's a, a better fit for this comp than, than the Ash would have been if it hadn't been panned? Um, considering there's a Rom and a Khan and, and Makoa, I think mm -hmm. Azan here is probably better. Like, he's probably going to get a lot of chances to escape a bit more. You know, use mm -hmm. his verticality, get the CC as well. Ash might have been good for the shield to stop Rom uh, collecting his souls, but I think Azan definitely fits here. I think any choice of solo tank still would have been up to unfair Five, to really play the comp. Four, three, okay, yeah, well, we have the game ready to go, and I, I think as we head into Shattered Desert for game number two, I feel like this is going to have to be something that... A game that has to end quickly for Sophia. I, I think once caught online, I think it's going to be much harder. Mm -hmm. uh, as the game goes on, definitely. I'd say the Wrecker's going to come online. It's definitely going to be a bit harder for Sophia. But with a comp like this, they're definitely going to use their, their, their sheer bolt just to get in front of people and definitely just try and close the game out early, like you said. So, yeah, that's what I expect. Yeah, we'll see. Oh, triple Wrecker, by the way. <laughs> Three yeah. Wrecker buys for them. And, I mean, that tracks. You got Khan. You have... Makoa, I mean, Makoa, I feel like that, that is like a nightmare for Khan. Like, you have a half show Makoa on your team, you're like, alright, they're gonna buy Wrecker, and I'm gonna be, I'm gonna have such a hard time living through any of this pressure, but we'll see how the game starts. It looks like a five stack right side. Again, not a ton of map control already being overwhelmed and sort of swarmed here, but they're surrendering space because of that fire, and now it's Unfair's chance to rotate, but they have to deal with that Leon. Yep, just as I said, the fire's gonna be really huge into those tanks. How much so, we don't know. Of course, Burn Monster's been there, so it's just gonna be a normal fireball, but looks to be quickly working. Knows he's got a pick here really quick. Alex does drop straight afterwards. Ah, and we keep going. Eagle's got another pick on Pixel. It's great. 
Yeah, tons of pressure here. Now, Eagle, look at this around again. I feel like this is something that Sophia is doing without even thinking. They are taking so much space on the map and just corralling them into one area. And honestly, half the time, Unfair is doing it to themselves. They're just not taking space in the way that they need to here. But now, forced back to point. This is the chance for them to spread and kite around them, and early Cruncy literally torn to pieces on the point here now. Azan and Vocal will apply some pressure onto Nosy, but Furia just able to bail them out. And Sophia says, we're gonna get out. If we get out now, we just have to wait for one spawn, and then we can refight. They're in a decent spot. How aggressive or unfair gonna get? Um, not too sure here. I think Sophia wanted the point a bit too much. I saw Crunchy not get behind cover there. Um, very interesting, but very good of them to recognize that. They got back very quickly, and uh, they stayed away from not dying too much. But now, it looks like it's working in their favor. They got two more quick picks now, coming back to this, and it looks like they're going to get the point. Azan jumped onto the point here to touch, but it looks like it's not going to be enough. Again, the sheer pressure of the tanks, and their big HP is just going to force everyone to go back, which is going to be a first point to Sophia. Also, a particularly unfortunate whirlwind from Bones there. I think they tried to go for some tried to save them, but it was a Makoa hook that got them away, so Bones couldn't commit all the way to save them here. Some also traded, actually. Tyra Crossfire put through with Rommel trying to slow him down, but it still is enough for Unfair to take advantage and start pushing. Nosy may be overextending for this here, but Avaleo, he's just, Nosy's just standing in the corner. Avaleo's like, he's going to strafe right like a normal person, but it doesn't happen. He kites all through it. Able to live way longer than he needs to, and that might let them apply a little bit more pressure with the Ancient Rage. Coming out now, Cruncy trading for Pixel and Unfair. They could have gotten some space, but just not able to with the cart moving basically this whole time. You can tell there was some really good communication going there. It looked like McCall was just isolated there, ready for four people to kill him, but that all kept him in the fight. And somehow he's managed to get Pixel isolated and he's dropped him, and it's allowed his team to keep going. So now they got the momentum back up, and they've got the red team back in spawn now. It's a really good position to be in as they push the pale around the corner into the final choke. The, the way you worded that, I thought you said that in spawn was a really good position to be in, but a better position is diving in off this. They use the midnight, they use the whirlwind, they chase so deep here, and Invocal is delaying two kills right now, pulling everyone away in the back line. That is a straight wipe onto that Sophia from Unfair, perfectly timed. Great play from them. As, uh, as you see some teams that are not so experienced, they tend to just spread themselves out and not really go and focus a kill first. As you saw there, red team came out of spawn and they instantly knew what to do. They chose their target and snowballed from there and got the clean wipe. Yeah, and, but the thing is, they can't do that again, right? That was a that was a two ults spent thing here. And a hook? Wait, 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 he overpowered him out of the... That seems a little wow. excessive, but it worked. <laughs> hook pistol, pixel just to make him stand still for the overpower to come in. That's a very early pick, and now Crossfire trying to slow this down, and Vocal hanging on by a thread up front. Huge peel from that Tyra, something I didn't think I'd ever say, to keep them going. The fire might slow it down again, but Furia ult will be what opens the door and Vocal hooked in. I think the rest of them are going to crumple under this tank pressure now. They really wanted to hold on for this defense, but the ults were just too strong. Still a big spend from Sophia for that. It's very interesting to see. I think now that I'm looking at their three tank comp, it's not necessarily that they try to pick three comps. I think they're just using Khan as a big DPS. Where we mm. mention sometimes that Khan is sometimes lackluster without his ult, it kind of doesn't matter now because he's got two big forces he can use. So Khan's free to just do what he likes. He can walk around, shoot. And when he's got the ult, even if he misses, it doesn't matter. He's got four more big ults than the rest of his team. So very good there. Yeah, the ult, the ult selection from Sophia is immense. But which is why I'm concerned about them in this coming fight. If their positioning is as good as it was, they'll be fine. But they don't have anything. They spent almost everything in that last fight. They're going to have Ancient Rage over time. They're going to have uh, Rommelt over time. But they just won't have it immediately to kick things off. Unfair. They might have their very aggressive combo as long as they can sustain. But this time, an aggressive move into the backline from a comp that I thought would want to be poking. They're trying to force this Fury into rotation. And it looks like early on, it's working. Especially with that missed hook. They dive wow. in onto Fury. And no heals left to sustain. Might be faltering now as long as they can keep themselves alive with this Whirlwind. Great target focus there, as you saw, they went straight for the Fury. The one thing keeping their comp up, regardless of their big HPs. And uh, it seems to be working. They got the cap now, they're just comfortable, poking. Not as they did straight away as you expected, but now that they're in the position, they've got themselves into the right poking position. And that all the time you've got to poke. Sometimes you just got to go in and make something happen. Which you've done here. Oh, but what's happening here? Caspian ult with so much DPS onto the half shell, but the Rommel comes in. They're not expecting him to turn around the corner. Can Leighton stay alive? No, it's just two players hanging on. 
Airily on point invoke will buy as much time as he can, but a massive comeback. When you don't kill any of the tanks, they can just go in and their natural bulk is going to be enough to shove you out, especially with the ults that they charged, overpower, and ancient rage ready for Sophia, and you can see that Khan is looking for something. Overpower trying to find it for now. Cruncy is holding really critical space. I'm not sure if they're going to be able to touch. Someone has to go for it, but they're getting pushed by an Ancient Rage in this back line. Two players already down, even with Avaleo throwing his life away for that cap. It's just Azan and Grover, and that's not going to be enough to turn it with a great start. Unfair just cannot hold on under the pressure of these three tanks. Yep. Looked like the ults didn't really matter. Again, they just used their sheer big HP pools to just go and sit and be really aggressive. Sometimes the high zone has not really worked when you've seen comps with less tanks, just because they can't mm -hmm. really stay in a place for so long. But Crunchy just really sat there. And even when he was dying, he didn't go back. He went straight in and caused even more distraction, which forced me yep. to just chill out. That's, that's a player who knows that playing for the KD is not really gonna... <laughs> you don't need to play for the, you don't need to play yep. for the KD at this point, right? But they, they feel like they are under so much duress they feel like the crossfire has to come out just to make the tanks back up for two seconds that's how you know that sophia is is making them feel the burn here under all this but caspian now getting aggressive on the flank side but forced away as they play back but a miracle axe from bones slipping through that crack does find nosy but they don't care they're gonna stay in they know that they can finally they disengage once that shield breaks this hook could have maybe let them stay but disengaging going all the way out after one death knowing they have the disadvantage sophia always leaves but this time it might not work out for them with this aggressive play coming back from unfair again it looked like crunchy just got bit a, a bit caught out again seen it twice now i think he could have gone all the way back just a bit more but it seems like again he's really trying to do his job and not play for his kd mm -hmm. there it got them the space that they need and it protected the rest of the team but look it seems to have worked out they got five together again which is what you want to retake yeah, they waste so little time because they all get out so quickly here. Now, Half Shell, every time they start walking, I feel like Unfair pops an ult. This time, it's going to be two with Caspian doing all that damage onto Crunchy. That Makoa wow. just disappears, and they can't get much more out of it, but they... Because Sophia, once again, disengaged, and Avaleo a little greedy. Now it's an even fight. Now, even after those ults, it might not be too bad. Overpower coming in as well, and they overextended maybe to try to save him. That Caspian is so low with no heals. Layton might be the savior that they need as Invocal feeds into the backline. Wow, I think Caspian's gonna have to be a character I also pick as well. That that I wasn't expecting that at all from a flank character where he was just able to shred bomb like that. It's pretty crazy, and it, it adds to the comp uh, that they've got there. But it doesn't seem to be enough. Again, it still seems like the pressure is just way too much for them to handle with the three tanks. Yeah, they they can't really get through. It has to be the Tyra who's dead right now, so a lot of, of free space here. I guarantee. I feel like a crossfire is going to come out here to try to get them this defense, but it's gonna be the whirlwind first. Romalt comes out. Can they live through it? Here comes the crossfire. As the enlightenment from the side doesn't find much of anything. If ancient rage in the back line, he's in the fire. Quincy is just getting destroyed right now but the tanks they survive through so much it's in vocal and bones the last two remaining how long can vocal survive well not very long apparently and it's all down to bones just to try to delay no spawns are coming in sophia close out a 8-0 in winners semis guaranteeing their spot in winners finals this game wow that is really a big thing to watch i think for anybody in the stream and for any other team watching it seems to be like the play that you're gonna have to get your big tanks of course, I mentioned mm. Rom being free was a big, interesting one to me, but it seems like he enabled not just flank characters to play in the first game, but also big tanks to also go in and do their thing too. Mm -hmm. And it looked to be too much pressure for the red team. I, I, I saw someone in chat say this, and I didn't want to... I wanted to see how this one went before I commented on it, but someone mentioned about, why did they ban Corvus and not Rom? And I feel like there are char multiple characters who can do what Corvus does, right? But Rom is Rom, and you yep. can, you know, maybe play a Zon like like him but no one has the aoe healing no one has that same like backline sustained pressure i think they just had to ban him they just yeah. let they let him they let them have it and they if you win the game that fast it's just not you're not going to be able to turn it around against that level of sustain both individually and for the team 